What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to the third part in our five part series on real business cycle theory. In this video, we're gonna talk about household optimization under uncertainty, let's go. So after analyzing the case of household optimization in the case of certainty about the future, let's now consider the case of uncertainty. So what is the source of uncertainty in this model? This is uncertainty with regards to the future rate of return on savings and wages in the next periods. Because of such uncertainty, the household does not choose consumption and leisure paths uh, deterministically, which is, means according to a strict functional form, but rather makes decisions based on expectations about the future. Here's the baseline case. Consider a household in period T that reduces consumption by a small amount. Let's call this delta C. The household then uses the extra wealth from the consumption reduction to increase consumption per member more in period t plus one than what would have otherwise been possible without such savings if our household is behaving optimally such a marginal change should leave the consumer's utility unchanged meaning that he should be going and adjusting uh this consumption bundle in such a way that it maximizes uh utility this is illustrated by considering the marginal utility from consumption per member household recalling that the marginal uh, our utility function sorry for our representative household is the following, right? Which is just from our baseline case. It follows that the marginal utility from this is E raised to the power of negative rho T times N T over H, right? Which is the average number of members per household all over one over C. Or equivalently, right? Instead of putting one there, right? We put delta C. Uh, this is the utility cost of reallocation. Uh, we're going to see a little bit later why we're calling it cost instead of the benefit. So it should be noted also that one of the parameters that are evolving, which are relevant to all household members, which is I talked about in the first part of this video series, is the population or number of household members n. In period t plus one, there are e to raise to the n power times more members compared to period t. Thus, the increase in consumption per member household is e raised to the power of negative n, right? This is a, our discounting factor, times one plus r t plus one, right? This is our rate of return in t plus one, times that consumption reduction, right? That delta c, right? This again is what I said before, is simply the discounting the returns from savings based on the number of new household members entering the model in period t plus one. With consideration for the marginal utility from consumption per member in period T plus one being similar to equation one, right? So it's just a symmetric type of pattern since we're going and dealing with, uh, you know, a discrete summation, we have the same sort of condition. So our expected utility looking out from period T to T plus one is the following, right? This is, uh, you know, not really what you'd go and expect but we're also because we're also factoring in uh this point uh where we have this discounted uh utility value so by equating equation one to equation two right which is the benefits my is equal to the costs right where we have the benefits on the right hand side and the cost on the left hand side we can go and derive the euler equation doing a little bit of algebra and you know identifying the constant parts of our uh or you know really exogenously evolving parts of our equation um we can go and get this this box equation over here right which is one over ct is equal to e raised to the power of negative rho times the expectation of one over the consumption in period t plus one times the was a one plus the rate of return in t plus one. This is our uh, intertemporal Euler equation uh, for our model here. So since we're dealing with expectations and we have two uncertain variables in our equation, this is consumption in t plus one and the rate of return in t plus one, we rewrite our Euler equation as the following, which is one over ct is equal to e raised to the power of negative rho uh, times the expectation of one over c t plus one times the expectation of one plus r t plus the covariance right now right of this one over c t plus one and the one plus the rate of return in period t plus one this indicates that the optimal consumption uh depends 
on how consumption and the rate of return are related to each other statistically. So this isn't a strict functional form that we have here, right? It really depends on the past history that we go and we have with regards to these two variables. So we also want to know how household labor supply is going to change in the case of uncertainty. Um, well, let's just first start off with how we started analyzing the case from the beginning by taking our first order condition from our utility function. We know, right, that the cost in terms of changing uh, labor supply is delta L, right, which is our leisure, and we multiply that by our first order condition. Uh, conversely, this is the benefit is defined as this same first order condition times WT and delta L, right, where this is feeding directly in to uh, wages. So since this change affects uh, consumption directly, the unit of consumption per household member, we go and we get um, this equation, right, which is our third equation from the top, is equivalent to our first order condition from consumption times W and delta L. Notice how uh, the difference between these top three conditions are whether or not we multiply by delta L or a W, T, and delta L. So that's just a useful heuristic for going and identifying what are the benefits and what is the cost. So setting these costs equal to benefits, we derive a really unique result, right? This is our result boxed in over here. Uh, what's really cool about this is that we go and see that each of our current period variables are determined exclusively by current period values. So meaning that we're not worrying about expectations in terms of what we've seen in the case of consumption, right? For labor supply, we see absolutely no impact at all um, in terms of what, what impact that goes and has, because we're going and observing the changes in terms of leisure where we'll really see that there is none. Um, so for the two period case, nothing changes. So that's the third part in our video series. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.